the key challenge with the video itself, it is pretty long and then it doesn't make any noise, so it's pretty hard to follow and all, right? And uh, it's pretty, it's also pretty technical because it's quite a lot of stuff to do and all. So I'll just show you John's uh, quick and dirty way of uh, dealing with these columns and all. So same thing, we'll follow his method of uh, going to primitives and extended primitives to create the capsule itself. So I'll just run one through here and here, okay? Something like that will do. All right, then with this, I'll try to align everything to the center, center, so that I don't have to deal with too much of a problem later on with this, huh? right now, okay? And thereafter, I will go to the modifier and I'll chop half away. Now notice he will ask you to right click and convert to editable poly, okay? I don't want to do that because uh, being new user and all, I like to have my commands in a stack mode. So I can stack them and I can undo them, I can reverse and undo them as and when I need to, okay? When I make a major mistake, so to speak. Eh? So I will click on the drop down list and then I'll look for editable or edit poly in this case. I will stack this command over and then I will expand from here. Now the video, many videos will often they not ask you to click on the icons down here at these points here, okay? These, huh? Now these are actually the same as these here. Alright? I prefer to use these because it's easier for me to, to teach and share with our students here than to just click on the icon. Then you really don't know what you're doing. Okay, so I'm going to go to the vertex selection mode so that I can select these vertices. All right, and then I can remove them by deleting them. This will give me a face that is half broken or a capsule that is half broken already. Can't quite see it like that because I haven't shaded it, I haven't shaded with edge it this way. Okay, number one. Now you will notice also, one side will be colored, the other side will be black and white, or you'll be darkened off and off. This is a max way of telling us, this is the, this is the, the other side of the negative face, so to speak. We can easily use the element sub-selection mode to select everything, and under the, under the edit elements, header here to flip the face, to invert the faces around. So once I do this, you will find that now the inner faces become the colored one, while the outer faces becomes the black one. All right, this is very reversible. I can select this and reverse this also. All right, so we can do this. Huh? Next. We can use the border selection mode here to select the border. Once this geometry has been opened up, it's been cut up, you will find that you will be able to use the border. Border is actually the same as edge selection mode, except border selects the entire boundary while edge selects only a segment. Okay, the border selects the entire boundary all around this way. All right. And then, in the front view, I will use that to create my additional edges here, or additional faces. I will do that by holding on to the shift key, and then I will drag out to form new faces this way. Okay? And in doing this, I will need to straighten the faces out so that I can uh, create modules or panels out of them later on for array purposes okay so i'm going to go back to okay i am now going to add another editable poly stack to it so i'll edit them and then click on editable poly again and with this i will click on vertex okay i'll just start with a few and then i'll zoom all the way down to edit geometry and I will look for this make planar portion here. Make planar, and uh, I'm going to look for Z axis to flatten them. Okay, and then I will look for more vertex again, and then I'll flatten it. 
select more again and then I'll flatten it select more flatten select more okay and then to hold the alternate key and then crossing to deselect and then I'll try to flatten it a little bit more this way okay and then I'll do the same as well for the bottom one I'll just flatten this flatten this and flatten this okay and flatten this as well and flatten the last two this way okay once this is done I will need to also flatten the two sides so that they become uh, they become used they become quite modular so I'm going to just select these vertices and then I will use the X axis to flatten this out okay same I will use these X axis to align everything together to one axis this way then I will have the panels ready all right this way right now so after this part of the work is done, I can add another, okay, obviously I'm going to, before I do this, I can adjust the, the proportion again to make sure things are in the right order and all, okay. I can do so by selecting the boundary uh, vertex points and then I can adjust this to make sure a hey, um, is this okay or not? All right. Is the is the column details this curve detail too too broad or too narrow or not? Or I can also adjust this detail here. All right. This way. So once I'm happy with the rough outline already, I can then add in another editable edit poly stack onto this. Okay, and that. will allow me to do array okay i can simply activate the 3d snaps right click to call out the snaps and grid settings huh? and i'll make sure i will snap to nothing but just the end points here okay and once i'm done with this i will activate the snaps activate the move command and then make sure i snap properly here yeah? from this point hold the shift key and drag and to make sure I snap to the next module nicely and let go. And uh, the video calls for what? 26 units, right? So I will clean in 26 units. And it should create an array for 26. Here already. Like that. Okay. Now notice also though, even if it is done this way, let me switch off the snap. Um, they are not connected. So I can move them like individual panels here. Mm, the video shows you what collapse right and all I'll show you another method huh? so you all you need to do is just select one module here okay under the edit geometry portion here you see attach button here okay you can click on this little box called attach list if you click on this now you will see not there's really nothing else inside but all the panels right, right or not so I can just simply select the whole lot here Okay, I can just simply hold the shift key and select the whole lot and click attach. So everything now will become one geometry. Okay, one part of this editable poly geometry here. See if I deselect and select again, everything gets selected. Okay, however though, once I'm inside edit poly mode, I go to element selection mode though. They are still individual panels that can be moved. That is not acceptable because when we manipulate the model later on, uh, if it is open, it will leak, and then it cannot it cannot uh, transform properly. So therefore, we need to use the vertex sub selection mode, and then we'll window select the whole lot, right? And then we will use this command under the edit vertices header here, and then we will click on well. Now, after we've done this. If you go to element selection mode now and then you take a look at any one of these modules you'll find that uh, you when you click on anywhere everything else gets selected okay so that's how it it's done so now that we're done with this we know that we have an entire panel here already 
okay this way okay now what we're gonna do is we're gonna wrap this guy around right in the shape so we can use this command called bend here so I'm gonna trial and error on this one first let's try I know that I'm gonna bend it around but it's a full circle it's a good 360 degrees so I'll key in 360 and then um, let's try the Z axis it looks like that so this is a definite no-no huh? so I'm gonna try my luck at Y axis that looks bad too okay <coughs> then I'm going to try my luck at X now it looks reasonable it looks like it makes sense huh? except except the direction looks wrong so we're gonna fix it how to fix this we're gonna check out the direction whether it's okay or not if we go this way it looks like it looks correct but it looks like the the indentation the de column details are bulging out so it's wrong again so I know that I have to switch it around 180 degrees so to get it real accurate I know I have to set it to minus 90 degrees so it looks like this okay so once this part of the work is done okay we will be able to add another editable poly here that will allow us to adjust the proportion of the column itself okay how we can simply go to the vertex selection mode and go to the front view here and then we will be able to window select the whole lot here and raise it to whichever you know column height that we see them fit or we see the need to raise it to this way here okay that way now once this part of the work is done though we work on uh, one of the key most uh, more challenging aspects of it the base of the column the base of the column is also the the top of the column itself all right so in order to do this part of the work we will need to add another editable poly stack to it just in case i make major mistakes to it okay so we can begin to then model more details using first of all the border selection mode okay if i click on the border selection mode now you will find that a there is one red line here selected somewhere you see this everywhere else is red okay it's round it's white except somewhere here it is red this is a big uh, alarm here telling me something is wrong with this model it is not properly uh, welded or sealed okay so if i were to show you an example uh, i click on this vertex point here and i drag it out you notice stuff happens here okay it's a broken hole so we have a problem because it's not sealed up properly okay so we're not going to do that we're going to fix this model how we're going to window select the whole lot again one more time and then we're going to click on under the edit vertices again and then we are going to click on well then we're going to test it again to select the border selection mode again and click on the border this time round you will notice nothing else gets selected other than the rim okay the absolute rim of the geometry here all right now with this happening we can begin to build the base of the column how we can do so by using the scale command holding on to the holding on to the shift key and drag the xy axis this will grow the edges for one okay the width of the column and then we use the move command here hold the shift key again and drag down this will build up the thickness okay and if it needs to be let's say tapered we will use the scale command here and then we will not hold the shift key but instead just drag to form the taper okay and then we can continue to expand by holding on to the let's say the shift key and then we can grow the the base all right 
and then we can hold on to the move command and we can grow the height and then we can shift again hold the shift key and scale again to grow the base and then to grow the height again we can keep going on and on and on all right until no end huh? so i don't want to overdo this i will just do three layers of that that will do the job okay let's say this way and with this i will then complete the column notice that there's still an open end there <clears throat> so therefore we are going to close up the gap we are going to close up the gap by clicking on the cap command here okay next we are going to do the detailing of the model itself so when we do this we are going to add another editable poly edit poly stack onto this and expand this and use the H selection mode. Now, let me show you this part here. Um, at the moment, it's still very, very jaggedish. Okay, it's very, very jagged in that sense. Okay, we're going to round stuff off by using the chamfer command. Okay, now how to do this? Huh? I'm just going to use the H selection mode here. I'm going to select one of these edges here under the selection mode. Okay, selection header. I'm going to use the loop command and to loop it. And you notice that the moment I loop this, the entire area here gets rounded up. And when I do this, next, uh, next. Now, I'm going to execute the chamfer command. I have to warn everybody, when you before you execute the chamfer command, you must, I repeat again, you must use an edit poly stack. Simply because this is a non-undoable command. When you when you do this, you do this a second time, you undo it, you mess up your model. So you want to keep the command stacks all there nicely and insert a new editable poly. In case you mess up, you can delete away that command stack and you can still work the model. If you collapse everything, that's the end already. Finish. It's very hard to fix a collapsed model. Okay, please remember this by heart. Now once we do this, we are going to go to the H, edit H header here, and we are going to use the chamfer command, okay? Now, notice what I'm doing. Uh, watch my screen here, okay? I'll show you one corner so you can see this properly. I will do this one chamfer. When I drag, it is like that. So, it, it builds a 45-degree uh, chamfer to it. Let go, okay? And then keep the lines there. Don't deselect. And then you chamfer it again. So notice when you do it a second time and you keep you make sure the spacing is pretty much even though. Okay, this one a little bit of eye power required. Huh? So if you keep it quite even here, you will find that now it looks pretty well rounded. Okay, don't need too much uh, smoothing or need too much turbo smoothing and everything. Okay, you just keep doing this and repeating this after a few rounds, right? You look like you spent 10,000 hours in the model, huh? Okay, so you select this again and then you loop this. Same thing, I'm going to go up to selection mode and loop it. Then go back down again to chamfer, right? So I chamfer one time. Oops. This is what happens when I select. Okay, I will loop this one time. And I'll loop this, I'll chamfer this again two times. Okay. Same thing here, I'm going to select this one and then I will uh, I will loop it and then same thing, I will I will chamfer it first round and then chamfer it again, second round here. Alright? And then to make this little chamfer look nicer, uh, um, I will do the same thing here also, some more detailing here. Okay? I will do this and then I will do this. And I will do this again. One selection, two selection. I'll just leave one of these alone and then just to show you very, very quickly how this is. 
So if you look at it now, the models look uh, pretty complicated and uh, it seems like there's, uh, there's an awful lot of detail here happening. At that. Okay, smooth and all. Huh? Now, um, the next thing is I need to show you this model is only half built as it is right now though, right? So after this is done, um, let's work on this. Very, very simply, I will use the symmetry command. Huh? That's why. The symmetry command here that will allow me to make a duplicate of the of the model inside axis. But it is in the wrong way around now though. So I will use the flip command and then move this around to allow me to achieve the kind of height that I need. Let's say this height is, I need the height to be this tall, but I only have this much, I only model this much. So there's a big empty gap down here. Which causes, uh, which which poses a bit of a problem for me at this point. Okay, like right now. So um, what I can do is, though, I can hold this, I can hold this part here, and go back down to editable poly vertex point. Huh? I can hold it. Notice I'm below the stack, and I can simply select this one. Okay, these half built ones, and I can simply drag it up to collapse this whole thing together. And go back to the top level here. Okay, and there you go. That's the column. Okay, and then with this, I will be able to obviously then select this one and then hold the shift key and then uh, drag this and clone a few columns out. It's going to get pretty heavy, this model. Okay, and voila. That's, the, that's our column. That's it.